Recording in progress. Okay, now we'll call this meeting to order. Uh, Councillor Solis will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Following that, um, Andrew Smiley, the first Councillor of the Bishop of the uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints will lead us in our invocation. Please stand with me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. for this opportunity to come together and at least discuss the matters of the city and also to bless us with our spirit of wisdom that there be a spirit of harmony among us and that we will be able to partake of thy wisdom as put forth in the matters of those that are dear to thee and we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord thank you Andrew thank you Councillor Solis Roll call, please. Mayor Lapine. Present. Councillor Holcomb. Present. Councillor Siebold. Councillor Solis. Present. Councillor Spencer. Present. Councillor Yoder. Present. Councillor Walker. Present. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you. Are there any changes or additions to the regular agenda? None. Entertain a motion for the consent agenda. I move that we approve the consent agenda as submitted. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Introductions. We have a new airport manager. Derek, can you say something about yourself? Yeah, so thank you for having me. Um, I just want to say how much I appreciate everyone welcoming me so far and helping me get settled in. Really sets a good first impression for the city, and I just want to thank everybody for that. Um, I'm also excited to be here in Madras. I recently uh, moved from Kansas, but I grew up in Oregon, so it's nice to be back uh, with the trees and mountains. Um, and then I also have one major update from the airport. Uh, the RFP went out for the apron project today, so you'll see those. Um, this is an exciting project for the airport um, that's going to reconstruct the pavement, expand parking, and add some fencing. So that went out today. Public comments. I have one that requested for public comments. There's any more than one? Say again. Paul May. Um, this is a good time to introduce yourself, but we don't typically allow um, candidates to talk about their campaign. Okay. Very fine. And thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Very good to see you again. My name is Paul May. I can't. I am, uh, can I say I'm running for office? You can't say you're running for office. All right. And I'm running for the Education Service District uh, at large, position number six. And I just wanted to introduce myself and let you see my mug. And uh, I'm a real person, so I just uh, hope that you'll all vote when it's appropriate. It's coming up soon. And if you're not, if you've moved recently, anyone, uh, you need to re-register. So be sure to do that. Anyway, thank you. I'm from the city of Metolius. I am the municipal court judge. I'm also president of the planning commission. So um, I'm also a two-term city councilor from McMinnville. So the process of city business is not foreign to me at all. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. May. Any other public comment? Is there any on Zoom? No Zoom, Zoom. Okay, visitor presentation, child abuse presentation. Steve, will you bring her up? moment though what I want to do is I want to um, want 
want to bring up that this is Child Abuse Prevention Month. You guys have seen the pinwheels out there that were set up a couple of weeks ago and the signs that are out there. And you guys have allowed me the opportunity in the past to come and address the council, and I appreciate that specifically when it comes to child abuse and those type of crimes that I investigate. Um, <clears throat> family violence, specifically child abuse, uh, in 30 years as a police officer, I haven't seen anything else that's more destructive to families and to individuals. Um, these have lasting effects. Uh, child abuse has lasting effects on the victims and on their families. In 2017, um, I was called to uh, assist the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office in a child abuse investigation in November. I was called about 7.30 that night and I spent the next several hours interviewing an individual that has dramatically and forever changed the course of one child's life. <clears throat> I would like to uh, present to you, introduce to you uh, Ezra and his grandmother, Tina. And I'd like her to take some time to talk to you and tell you what, how this has changed Ezra's life because of what this individual did who is um, only serving a 12 year sentence now. Uh, this boy that you see here, Ezra, is forever confined to that chair. Um, he's come a long way from the time that I saw him at OHSU. And I'm going to give this over to <laughs> I'm going to give this over to Tina so she can explain uh, some of what has occurred with him, her, her family, and what's going forward in the legislature or what uh, some individuals are trying to do in the legislature when it comes to child abuse. Hi. So my name is Tina Jorgensen and I am Ezra's grandma and that's probably what I'm most famous for. On November 19th, 2017, well let me start over. November 19th, 2017 forever changed my family's lives. Ezra, my two-year-old grandson, was brutally beaten and was put in a crib to die alone by a man that made no attempt, attempt to seek medical help. The man admitted to playfully shaking him and playfully hitting his head on the floor to get him excited to go pick his mom up at work. He did this until Ezra appeared to walk around like a drunk baby, stumbling over his toys and falling until he could no longer get up. Although we will never know the whole truth of how he was beaten, we do know that Ezra was left unable to walk, talk, or eat on his own. The doctors described Ezra's brain injuries as catastrophic. After going in for emergency brain sur surgery to save his life, where his bone flap was removed to relieve pressure on his brain, he had a trach and feeding tube put in. When he was declared stable enough, his bone flap was put back in place, but the doctors soon found fluid was unable to disperse in his brain and a shunt was placed, but he'd need another revision before going home. They have given Ezra no hope of recovery, and he will most likely not make it to be a teenager, not because of a brain in injury, mind you, but because of a common cold. When Ezra gets a cold, it's usually an airplane trip to Portland, several weeks in the hospital, with him usually ending up on a ventilator. We have been airlifted to Portland at least eight times in the last five years. The man that did this to Ezra is serving 12 years for giving Ezra a life sentence. The people in Ezra's life are also living out that life sentence with him. My 25 year career in banking is over because I had to quit my job to become Ezra's foster parent as well as his full time caregiver. My marriage of almost 20 years ended and my teenage daughter's family as she once knew it was ripped apart because of all the stress involved in this tragedy. Nothing in our lives was left untouched. These are just a few examples of how this kind of crime not only affects the victim, but the whole family. As we move forward in the month of April, the month designated specifically for child 
Abuse Prevention Awareness, I'm asking the legislators of the state Senate to please consider Ezra's law. The sentencing we have in place now is not sufficient for anyone involved. Ezra's law will highlight a tragic loophole in the law where sentencing in cases involving severe quality of life loss are not proportional sentencing options for judges. Ezra's law will also serve to protect those who cannot protect themselves and as a deterrent, deterrent against assaulting the innocent victims. As I continue to move forward with Ezra's journey, I'm learning how important it is to continue to promote awareness and be an advocate. The law enforcement of this community have been, a, have been huge advocates in the fight, and I feel it is all our responsibility to be a voice for the innocent. You as members of city council represent the community's best interest, and what better way to do that than build a safe foundation for the children of our future. I'm asking all of you to join and support child abuse awareness, create change, and become involved, not just this month, but year around. And so um, Ezra's law was, was put before um, the Senate this year. And um, actually, it was yester yesterday that it hit the floor. And of course, it died. Um, and so Daniel Bonham, who, is the led, uh, who was, who was the, the representative that now is a senator, has been working on this. This will be his fourth time he's presented Ezra's Law. And so I don't know if you know what Ezra's Law is, but basically a li uh, um, attempted murder in the state of Oregon is a maximum of 10 years. So it doesn't really matter if s someone um, shoots you in the arm and, it, and is charged with attempted murder, and that person with, that got shot in the arm obviously has an injury but is able to move on with their life. So the, so the, um, the punishment does not match the, um, the um, <laughs> I'm, I'm drawing a blank here, the, what happens to them. I mean, so, so just because the severity of it, uh, of what happened. So Ezra is basically serving that life sentence and the, the man is basically just getting the 10 years for it. So with Ezra's law, it is about the, um, um, it's about how severe they're hurt. And so if someone is, sir, if someone is, has life altering injuries and it is intentional, then Ezra's law would be a minimum of 25 years for someone that is for attempted murder. So attempted murder would still be 10 years, but if, but if it, the injuries were um, life altering, then that's where Ezra's law would come into play. So Daniel spoke, um, and this is what he says today. This session, I reintroduced Ezra's law as SB 430. In its fourth iteration, it would have made sentence far more stricter when the victims of the violent crime suffer permanent life-altering injuries. The bill is named after Ezra Jerome Thomas, the Jefferson County boy left with permanent and severe disabilities after a violent beating when he was two years old. Had Ezra died from the trauma, his abuser would have faced 30 years to life in prison, a sentence that gives the family some semblance of justice. Instead, Ezra's abuser received only 12, a 12 year sentence, but Ezra will spend a lifetime with medical injuries from the brutality he experienced. Yesterday, Senate Republicans attempted to withdraw 16 bills, including Ezra's law, out of floor committee and to the floor. These bills would have made Oregon communities safer. To no surprise, Democrats voted in lockstep to say no to all of them. I want to keep Oregon communities safe and victims' families like Ezra justice. <laughs> Sorry. So I think that as a community, um, we have to start working towards preventing this and, and becoming aware and and being the voice for those kids, and that's why I'm here today. And um, as you can see, Ezra has come a long way. Um, what he once had a trach, uh, two years ago, the trach was removed. Uh, we never thought that Ezra would get to go to school again. He actually gets to go to school two days, uh, I mean, four days a week, two hours a day. So um, but even though he will, s everything is gonna be very, very hard for him, um, he has, he has come a long way from what they had given us. They told us he would most likely not even make it through the night. And then when he did, they said he would most likely live in a vegetative state the rest of his life. So 
He's a true miracle here for all of us today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you sharing that with us. Thank you, Tina. Please don't go away. I'd like you to stay for the proclamation. Thank you for coming, Tina. Thank you, Tina. Appreciate you. Thank you, Tina. And thank you to the rest of you who have come as well uh, for Ezra and to raise awareness of this. Uh, I think I can speak for anybody who's a parent and certainly all of us up here that child abuse is just awful to imagine and even worse to live. I could not even imagine my daughter going through anything close to this. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for raising the awareness. And hopefully at some point, Ezra's law will pass. It should have passed many years ago. And thank you to our law enforcement, as you guys are directly involved more so than any of us in this work. It is. Thank you all. Everybody okay? Okay. <clears throat> okay. Arbor Day proclamation. So we don't have to read that. Just acknowledge that uh, April. 28th, 2023 is uh, Arbor Day. Okay. Yes. Yes. Let's take a five-minute break. 
Uh, regular agenda. Uh, pavement analysis assessment agreement for services. Mike. Thank you, Mayor. So this is not news, really. This is the same thing I keep talking about, and uh, finally we're here. We have someone that can actually perform this work. Um, so we have three different quotes, and I'm sorry, the last one, um, it came in really late, and I think it's in the, uh, I uploaded that, Lisa, I guess, uh, if you, there you go, Mandalay. So that's the last one that came in. Um, I didn't do the math on that one, but it did come out 67,500 versus the one that we're recommending, which is uh, 55,230. Now we do have the third quote, and what I wanted to do is kind of show you a comparison. So I've been talking about this scanning, how we're gonna do pavement assessment and analysis. So scanning of the pavement is the best way to do it. It's, it's very accurate. It collects data. We can put it in a database and a spreadsheet. Uh, we can use it to actually manage our pavement program. And so the third quote that we have that's in your packet is one that is called a windshield survey. Kind of the old school method. You just drive down the road, you, you kind of look at the pavement, you see how the cracking is, and you go, oh, okay, well this PCI rating, which is a pavement condition index, and it's zero to 100. And somebody might say, well, it's 70. So it's a little subjective. You know, the next person coming down the road may say, no, it's an 80. So the data that's collected by scanning is much more accurate. Uh, so what we've done is we've talked to the three different companies, and these are um, consultants that do this. This is all they do. And so with that, we've kind of zeroed in on IMS. So IMS actually has the better product. Uh, we think there's a better consultant. And what they're going to provide is not only the scanning, but after they get all the data collected, then they will provide a spreadsheet and put it into a 10-year plan. So the 10-year plan, uh, of course in Madras, um, we're gonna say it's gonna last us 20 years, hopefully, if we don't let utilities cut up the road. But within the 10-year plan, what that'll do, it starts out a very good baseline for us. They'll prioritize all the work. Once we get it prioritized, we can input our budget and immediately in the spreadsheet, it will actually calculate and prioritize the worst condition to the best. So we can pick and choose. There may be a worst condition and it's a um, small cul-de-sac that uh, is not traveled much. We may not put that as a high priority. Of course, you know, the data is the data. So we can manually sort through that and identify these conditions. So what I'm asking for tonight is approval to hire this consultant, and then also uh, to have the agreement executed. So the agreement has been sent to our attorney. The attorney has made comments, and the vendor has signed that. So we have vetted that. So I'd like to take any questions. I know I talk a lot about pavement, so I, I like pavement, so I'm happy to be here talking about it. Just a quick question on that last comment about our attorney has seen this. Um, did he have any changes, or is this the document that the attorney has signed off on? Yes, so uh, Garrett did review the document, and he made some changes, and they were accepted by the vendor. Perfect, thanks. I have a question. Um, I've heard a lot from the Transportation Action Committee that we had about PCI ratings. And this sounds like it's a different thing. Is this um, pavement assessment data that we're gonna get something that can be used for grant applications? Is it a universally accepted standard of measure? Oh yes, this, this is countrywide. Um, so everybody in the US uses it. Um, uh, FHA, uh, and FWA, they, they've all accepted this. This is kind of the, the method that we use for doing pavement conditions. So pavement itself, um, cars don't really tear up pavement, trucks do. So it's mainly our collector roads that get damaged uh, first. And so what we do is we, we, we take a look at the surface. So the surface has all these cracks, the different cracks, you know, alligator cracks, block cracking, all that kind of different cracking. When they classify it, it gives us an idea of what the, you know, not just the condition, but what's going on with the actual material. And so we'll take that information, 
based on that and identify, well, this particular area of block cracking, well, you know, maybe it just, it, it, it shrank is typically what happened. For, with that, that means that the material started to separate, and when it did, it started cracking. It made big blocks out of it. That type of pavement can be reconditioned. There are certain types of pavement that you cannot recondition because there's something deeper, which is the base, and there's base failure. So this helps us determine where to put the money. You know, is it a chip seal? Very inexpensive way to maintain pavement, or is it a tear it up, reconstruct it, mill it, resurface? So this is what's going to help us actually develop this program. To me, that is ex very wise um, because you have a database to look back at. You're not just um, winging it. And uh, I think that's really a smart way to uh, start out because you can't windshield it and do what that scanning does. So, and it'll help you and save you time in the long run because you will, it will be prioritized. So I'm 100% uh, for this and I support it. Yeah, I'd like to say also that um, it looks like that'd be something to be very proactive, which is good for us because when somebody calls in and complains to you about a street not being done, you can tell them, well, this is our plan and this is what we're working on. So it'll kind of help alleviate some of those complaints, I think. So I appreciate it. Is there anything else that um, you feel that is necessary to add to this? Is there something missing that? Yes, there's actually, a, there's two more steps if we take it a little bit further. Uh, they have a device, it's called a falling weight deflection test and it, it's like a big hammer and it drops down on the pavement and it tells us what that structural capability is uh, and it goes below the surface so it does go a depth and with that information we can determine well we've got a pretty good base or we have something that's kind of spongy and so if we do something like that then it'll give us an idea so what I've done in the past is not just the scanning but I've also done um, GPR ground penetrating radar and what that does is it tells me a density and so sometimes we don't know the depth of the asphalt it may have been there for 50 years and it's only two inches or it may be six inches I've reconstructed roads and found out after I reconstructed them I didn't have to do the whole roads I could have just done the shoulders <laughs> it's so just collecting the data is very valuable information um, putting the money where it's needed and I guess the other piece of that is we can always go out and we can just do some corings and find out what kind of base we have. Right, so once you run this scan, then there may be areas that you'll have to do that additional testing on that would yes, be able to help us better decide if it needs to be replaced or not or just how it needs to be replaced, so awesome. Right. Yeah, road construction would be, that means tearing up the whole thing and rebuilding it, very expensive, but sometimes that is the case. Councillor Spencer, do you have a comment or a question? Um, I would just like to add um, the comments of all the other councillors that have done and to say that um, this is very important, having a tool that it's updated, that it's up to par in technology and that we will be able to use for grants and to remember that we have it in our goals, right, in our and our new uh, goals to attest, that is to have 100% of our streets paved and to fix the ones I really think um, this is very important and I appreciate the effort that you have done to um, get this tool for us and I will be behind um, approving this measure. Thank you, Councillor Spencer. Councillor Holcomb, anything else? <laughs> Councillor Solis? Okay, in that case, uh, entertain a motion. I make a motion that the council approve the quote for infrastructure management services IMS and execute the agreement for the pavement assessment and data collection for the cost of $55,230. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Was that an aye, Councillor Spencer? Yes, aye. Thank you. Any opposed? None? Passes unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Next, 
Review of the revised city budget calendar. Crystal. Thank you very much. So um, last meeting I brought before you a, a draft and so we revised that based on the information. Um, so we are um, going to print binders and have them ready for your review and pick up on the 5th of May. Um, that's a little different than the first, but we need a little bit of extra time to get all of our narratives and everything printed. So the 5th of May is a Friday. You can pick them up here and we'll also send out electronic versions. Um, the 11th is a Thursday. That's where you requested that we have all the community grant presentations. Um, prior to that, we'll have the election of officers. On the 16th, we'll do the public hearing for the state revenue sharing, receive the budget message, and then proceed with the budget uh, by department, and then finish up on the 18th. So because of our um, timeline, we need to finish on the 18th. So I'm just letting you know that publication requirements and planned vacations um, require us to finish on the 18th. So if I need to add another <laughs> night, um, I need to go ahead and add that to the calendar here. But that's what we've proposed so far based on the comments that we received last time. Well, I appreciate your flexibility and putting all that together. Does anybody have any questions? Can I entertain a motion then? I make a motion to approve a revised city budget calendar for the fiscal year 2023 and 2024. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I heard Councillor Spencer. <laughs> any opposed? Good. Pass unanimous. Thank you, Crystal. Okay, this time we'll go to our, our department reports. If I can get a report. <laughs> Mr. Plummer, we'll start with you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the uh, council, thank you. Um, we're making headway when it comes to our recruiting and uh, hiring. We're um, we're probably to the point, I think, if Charles would agree, we're about ready to turn off the advertisement because we've collected enough people to move forward um, for us to be in the pipeline and in the progress. Uh, in fact, I just received some information today about another uh, officer who would like to have a communication with me about uh, being able to uh, look at coming to work for the Madras Police Department. So we have, um, I think we're up to seven or eight now interested parties. Um, with applications having gone out to all of them except for the one I just communicated with here this afternoon. So that's really a positive um, step. Something else that uh, just developed today that uh, I think will be helpful for the, uh, for the department is that um, I received just a, a telephone call this afternoon from uh, somebody that I'm um, in communication with from the Department of Transportation, Transportation Safety Office. And they just had a question about something unrelated and asked me how it was going and I told them about e-citations, electronic citations and our ability to uh, move forward for that for our officers and she told me we have a grant funding stream specifically for that and so we're now in communication about getting paperwork for a grant application from uh, the ODOT's Transportation Safety Office in order to, uh, to help us with getting electronic citations uh, here for the PD. So that was a really good piece of news today. So thank you. Mr. Plummer, that's some wonderful news. I like to see, it's, it's wonderful to see our, um, our police department was stabilized or started to get stabilized when Mr. Patrol was here. And now it seems like it's already flourishing with you here and it's just, it's wonderful to hear. Well, thank you. And, and again, I've, I've said this before and I'll reiterate it again for, uh, for everybody here. It's, uh, it's with the great support of the council and the mayor's office that we're able to make these strides and push these things forward and step into it. And uh, <clears throat> it is making a difference uh, back in the patrol room with our folks. Thank you. I have a question. May I? Yes. Um, why are we, would we 
stop um, accepting more applications. The past have, at least for what I've known, that you have had 10, 15, and we haven't got a single one, you know, that we accepted because of the background and everything that we went through. So why uh, stop uh, accepting more applications at the moment? I, I wouldn't, but... Um, that and that's, that's a great question. The, the, the question really becomes then is our capacity to process them. Um, for those who aren't aware, the background process for sworn law enforcement takes a while. Um, it is a long process. Um, they request, the background investigators, we request that they give us at least 10 people to contact. And in the process, we ask for two more people from those 10 people. So to reach out and contact those folks to construct that background, to get a really good picture of that person's character. Then once we get past that, we also have some requirements from the Department of Public Safety Standards and Training, which means before we can move to that conditional job offer, we have to get them to a psych evaluation, we have to get them to a medical doctor, we have to make sure that they can physically complete or do the tasks. And all of that is, is, is time in motion. So. Once we start building that backlog up there, uh, we really right now don't have the capacity to move 10 people forward at the same time. So, because we're not the only ones in the law enforcement community that are in competition for our background investigators for the psych evaluations that are in the state um, to get people moving forward. So, but thank, that's a great question. And um, I think we'll take, we'll probably continue to take them, but we will just hold them in a pool so that as people move through our process and they either are successful or they're not successful, then these people will be shuttled forward that we have back in that pool. For the same reason um, that it takes so much time is this, that if I feel that if we stop the process right now of accepting, then you know we're gonna go through the batch and if it, does, it goes bad, then we have to redo everything. It's like just perhaps what you said in the second, perhaps you can just accumulate you know, them and, and little by little, um, uh, sending the rest. I mean, just maintain the flow until we get the people that we want. But if not, if we stall it now, then it's going to take us another one or two months just to start everything again. It's just to be aware because of what I've heard of what happened the last six months or a year trying to recruit other people. But thank you for your information. Thank you for your support. Finance, Crystal. Thank you very much. Um, I was asked to provide an asset list so I have emailed that out to each of you this evening. If you have questions about that, I'm happy to answer um, any of those. I would just ask that um, we not create a quorum with the questions. So if you could just email me directly. But you should all have an email from me. Um, secondly, our audit is extended currently through April 28th. So hopefully we, we can get that wrapped up because I would love to do that before we pass the budget. Um, the budget is in full swing. Our um, in the process, shall we say. And we will have food at the budget committee meeting, so they start at 5.30, but please arrive around 5 and we will feed you. So, there you go. Thank you, Crystal. Public Works, no, 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 back up. Community Development, Nick. <laughs> Good evening, a um, couple things for the council. First, uh, the Community Development Department earlier this year approved uh, a 24-unit affo uh, affordable housing development for seniors next to the community center. Um, and they are having a groundbreaking for that project on May 9th at 1 p.m. And the developer uh, would love all of you to be there. It's a very unique project. Um, it's an income-restricted development just for seniors, um, and I think it'll be a, a great, um, great for our community and, and great for the council to be there if you could. Additionally, I did get an um, email from the League of Oregon Cities. There's an upcoming uh, a training on um, urban renewal. It's a webinar. Uh, Elaine Howard is going to... Uh, uh, do most of that training. She happens to be one of our consultants for urban renewal. The training's on uh, May 4th from 68.86 to 8 p.m. Um, I have a flyer here if you'd like it. The registration fees could be covered, will be covered by the city if you'd like that as well. Um, and
That is all. Thank you. I got a cornered by a sweet old lady at Eagle Bakery last week um, bring, uh, discussing that uh, uh, development you're talking about and wanted to know um, where she could sign up to reserve a place. <laughs> <laughs> I told her I did not know, but I know she was going to hit me up again next time I see her there. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll try to get that answer before Friday. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Yeah. Public well, Works, Mike. Uh, so I've got a couple of things. Uh, one of those is the G Street Water Line Improvement Project. Uh, as you know, the water line's in, it's complete, meters are in. They're starting to put base rock in, which uh, I'm talking pavement again, so they're getting ready to pave. <laughs> so that'll be done here shortly, and uh, we'll wrap that project up. And then uh, we have one last item, and I think I'm going to let Derek tell you about this one, okay? So in addition, right now, we're reviewing the proposals for the, the FBO and we've given them to the committee to um, score and rank. So that's where we're at with that. Sounds great. Michelle, I know you have a presentation for us. I have pictures of goats. <laughs> <laughs> I put together a little slideshow just show you guys. There, like some, see, there's some goats before and after. <laughs> Um, of just what they were able to accomplish for the couple weeks that they were there. Um, I think they did a really good job. <laughs> so it was challenging to try to remember where I stood and took pictures so I could have um, landmarks in there to show that it was the same area. We're pretty excited about this. We're hoping that we'll be able to bring the goats back again and have them do some more work for us, um, especially in the creek, um, to try to get some of that vegetation out of there. And you can also, if you drove along Canyon and C Street, you can see where the fire department's been doing some clearing and helping um, clear up and do some stuff there too, which is really awesome. That will help with any of the, um, you know, if there's any fire threat or anything like that. So that will help along there. I think that's my last picture. And then I just wanted to remind everybody, April 28th is going to be Arbor Day. You can see all the wonderful pictures that were submitted by the kids. We had nine classes that submitted um, posters. Um, we had two classes from Warm Springs, one class from Madras Elementary Kindergarten, and the rest all came from Atolius Elementary. We had a third grade, a fourth grade, and fifth grade. Actually, two of each came from, from Atolius. So that's all I got. I like the one that says 30 years and still planting. That's so great. That, that yep. is our theme for this year. Yep. Um, this year, we're 30 year, we have 30 years as a Tree City USA. Um, and so that was our theme. Um, some of the, you can see some of the posters do say that 30 years and still planting. So um, yeah, that was our theme for the year. Here's to our next 30. Thank you, Michelle. Derek, at this spot, we have a spot for you to give an airport report. Do you have anything more to say? I don't have anything in addition to the, uh, just the FBO proposal and then the apron project. Those are the two big things we have going on right now. Thank you. Human Resources, Charo. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> just want to update you on the city recorder position. We had uh, three applicants, and uh, I have uh, Friday the 21st set aside for uh, interviews. I would like to ask anybody on the council if they would like to participate in interviews. Okay. And if, 
change your mind, let me know. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, interviews will be conducted that day. And uh, this is a little bit in advance, however, and I will remind you again at our next meeting, but the first Thursday is going to be coming up in May. It will be May the 4th. <laughs> May the f <laughs> That's right. It, is which, Dax still going to be here? <laughs> um, <laughs> We'll dress him up as RTD2. I know that too. Dax will be here. <laughs> <laughs> However, the theme is May the 4th be with you. So <laughs> that, that is the theme of this, um, of this first, first Thursday. So you'll, you will receive another reminder, but look forward to that. All right. Thank you. City Administrator. Christy. I don't have a report tonight other than to just say that the staff continues to orient me to the city. This is the start of my fourth week here. And all I can say at this point is, wow. Um, they have a tremendous workload and they're all doing amazing jobs for the city. And again, I just want to compliment them on a job well done. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. I guess I could add, uh, we're going to be briefing you um, at your next work session on the recruitment efforts and pr um, options for the city administrator position. And this is where you're going to tell us that you're still just temporary, right? <laughs> still just temporary. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Nate. I apologize. I had a note for something else to brief you on, but I couldn't remember my uh, acronym. I just remembered. The city uh, and ODOT are working on the South Madras Concept Area Refinement Plan. That's the transportation refinement plan from basically Fairground South. Uh, we would like one, maybe two city councilors to sit on the advisory committee um, for that project. It's about a two-year project. Um, Think of it as a project that will consider bypass other projects like that, land use in that area. Very important uh, transportation planning project in our communities. We see a lot of interest in that area. So it's a call for interest. What kind of commitment would that be time-wise? I would be interested. I just want to make sure before committing myself that I know what the time. As would I. Yeah, like, like time of day. Uh, time of day, length of meetings, number of meetings. The, oh, okay, so it'll be over two years. Meetings probably will be, because it's ODOT, it's usually during the day. Um, some of these meetings probably be at least an hour, probably no more than two hours. Um, we have not set a schedule, so if there's a particular time of the day or, or day of the week that would work best for you, I'd also want to hear that so we could accommodate. Okay, all right, uh, let me double check and make sure that I can get the approval from work since it would be during the day, but I would sure. be interested in jumping on that. Okay. And yeah, I'm sort of semi-retiring, so I can do a little more. Rub it in. And I have some vested interest in that end of town. Very good. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Mayor. City Recorder Communications, Lisa. Let's just let council know that the poll for the curbside recycling has been closed and the results are in and I'll share those with you um, in the next day or two. And there's probably not much that's surprising there to you. Uh, we had 112 respondents, so not too bad for just putting a little poll out there on Facebook. And um, no doubt you have seen quite a bit of activity on Facebook about the robot that Public Works has brought into town that is a very exciting and innovative project, um, but uh, which really and truly for what you might have seen on Facebook does not represent uh, how many people really are excited about it. So just let you know that um, you did ask for me to increase community engagement. Therefore, I have met that goal you're up to about 35,000 impressions on that one right now. It's it, far exceeding your boil water notice. And um, so, you know, 
Engagement is engagement. That's impressive that poor Dax has got more attention than a potential emergency over water. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Jeremy, are you on? Mayor, you have uh, Dustin Hawkins here at the city attorney's office. Nothing to report from our office. Thank you, Dustin. Okay, as we go into counselor updates, uh, please remember to say something about your committee that you're assigned to if you have anything. Councilor Holcomb. EDCO meeting is in two weeks, so I do not have an update for that. Um, I don't have anything. Just a um, little emotional meeting tonight, but thank you for everybody's efforts and um, tough one to have on the agenda, but I appreciated them coming and keeping it front and center in everybody's mind. Councilor Silius. I would just second that regarding this evening. Um, a lot of emotions and I hope that Ezra's law gets passed. It should have been passed long ago. Um, I do have updates because CYC meets on the first Thursday of the month, so I do have a few things from that meeting. Uh, so CYC appointed a member of the Core 3 Executive Committee to their budget committee, specifically in relation to the Core 3 project. The Core 3 project, for those not aware, uh, is going to be essentially a emergency services site, something for uh, police and fire across the state to be able to utilize um, for training purposes and um, they're going to have burn buildings and driving courses and it's going to be located in Redmond over just a little bit south of the airport. Uh, Deschutes County dedicated a sizable chunk of land to that. So we appointed a member of Core 3 to our budget committee just so that they can participate as COIC is currently the um, entity that will be receiving funds for that as Core 3 is not an organization of their own yet. Um, they are also, CYC is currently actually working on strategic planning. Um, and so I'm going to jump on there to learn a lot about that. And they had hired a consultant uh, and we received a report from the consultant and learned a lot of good things from that presentation just kind of on the process. And I think it might be wise for City of Madras to look at doing that, hiring a consultant to help us through that process as council looks at kind of redoing how uh, we do our strategic plans. And lastly, we discussed the governor's executive order 23-02, which is declaring homelessness a state of emergency. And just some of the challenges that this executive order presents to the state and also to our region uh, is that $130 million is being pushed out into the state to achieve certain goals by January 10th of 2024. And the caveat there is that this is not funding obligated, this is funding spent. So to reach these goals, we have to have utilized this money by then, and that's it. So anything we don't spend by then goes back. Um, there's a lot of things unclear about this process specifically to Central Oregon, we're looking at 14 to $14.5 million to achieve uh, three different goals, prevent 354 households from becoming homeless, 81 to 83 new shelter beds to be created, um, as well as rehouse 157 to 162 unsheltered households. Uh, unfortunately, these are some lofty goals, uh, especially because we have to have them spent by January 10th of 24, and that's not really enough time for us to actually build anything. So looking at the other options, which are limited, um, because some of the rules and requirements on this is uh, against renovations. So we can't necessarily take somewhere and renovate it. Um, so just some of the challenges that come with that, but I think it would be important for the city of Madras to kind of also be thinking about this and how we can help and participate in that. Um, this might also be a great opportunity for our project for our House of Service Center to look at, see if we can grab some of that funding. So <laughs> I see Nick nodding his head. He's very excited about this. So, <laughs> yep. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. So, and that is all I have. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Councilor Silius. Councilor Yoder. 
Um, yeah, I'd like to kind of reiterate what was said. Thank you for all your hard work. And I met with Christy earlier this week and yeah, yesterday, I guess it was <laughs> getting my days mixed up already, but I appreciate all the effort that's being put into working here in our city and keeping it what it needs to be. But, um, and then Nick, I'd also like to say, if you want me on that, um, if I need to be on there, if Solis doesn't work out on the DOT South project, <laughs> let me know. I'd be happy to help with that also. Yeah, yeah. I think as long as we don't have a quorum, I don't really see okay. any problem with that. So I'll, I'll okay. add you to the list. Okay, perfect. Appreciate it. And then I also want to say, I know Tina's not here, but I appreciate all the effort that she puts into that. I've seen a lot of child abuse, I'm sure, as all of us have, but it's always a big, huge detriment to the child and to their learning abilities later on in life and to how they move through life and how they learn and then how they interact with people later on. It's a very difficult subject. So but anyways, I appreciate her efforts and everyone's efforts on that for that matter. Thank you, Councilor Yoder. Councilor Spencer, do you have anything to report? Yes, so I'm from the Urban Forestry Committee, just to say that it's been really focused on the 30, three, 30 years of uh, planting trees. And what's interesting is that one of our new members has a photo of the person that started all this. So um, she was gonna get the photo, we were gonna try to get a reporter to talk about this person. And what's interesting is that in this photo, uh, there's children that planted the first tree and perhaps somebody could recognize them. I don't know if Michelle, um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? I haven't seen the photo yet, Patricia, and um, so I was waiting for Cindy to bring it. Ah, okay, so it's just interesting. So we've been focused on that, um, just to, to notice in there. Uh, the second thing to mention, uh, Sue does work very well. I am very happy how it's working. Um, I'm sick, so that's why I haven't gone there. But wanted to mention that um, the geolocation is what blocks, um, puts a wall. When you're, whether in an airplane or you're out of the country, uh, you cannot use the Zoom. Uh, I learned this from Redmond that they had uh, some people that were vacationing and wanted to, <laughs> to participate, but they were out of the country, so it gets blocked. So next time, if anybody wants to leave, just has to let Nick, Nick, I guess, to know, and then you know we'll be able to zoom in. And I had a question for Lisa that I was thinking: um, if Madras has uh, uh, ten thousand or seven thousand people, you know, and expands to ten thousand, how is that we got thirty-five thousand impressions? Well, you, you get comments from uh, people who are posting on the news media posts also. So these are people that are posting from all over, not just Madras. Uh, I okay. read some from Bend. <laughs> okay. But you get well, them from you. Portland. You get them from everywhere. <laughs> okay. Thank you, um, Mayor Lipping. Thank you, Councilor Spencer. Councilor Walker. I'm on the Urban Forestry Council as well, so I echo what she said. It's cool to see all the pictures and uh, um, all the effort the kids put into that. And um, unfortunately, I'll be gone on the 28th, so uh, I wish you all a happy Arbor Day. Thank you. Um, we're gonna have our first meeting with the, of the Homeless Awareness Committee on April 17th. So we've already got a couple things on the agenda. My view or my vision on this is when I talked to Dr. Baker from the health department is that there's homeless that you see and homeless that you don't see. And I noticed when I got quoted that in the news, somebody laughed. I don't think they understood what I meant by that. There's an awful lot of homeless in this community that we don't see. They're living in their cars, they're living in someone's couches or whatever. Those are people that we, that Dr. Baker and I are talking about. See, we can't get certain resources to them before they end up becoming ones that you do see. So there's that group. And then there's the ones you do see. We see them all the time behind Sonic. That's a different kind of situation, different kind of resources that we need to get to. 
And that's where Nick and I were actually talking about that, you know, that 14 million, maybe we can slice off a million of that to help with that project along. So I'm kind of excited about this committee. There's a wide range of disciplines on there, so I'm sure there's gonna be a wide range of thought. Be interesting to see where this goes. That's all I have. Does anybody else have anything else? I do have one other thing that I forgot to mention. I wanted to thank Michelle for your weekly email. That has been super cool to see. Um, awesome to see what you guys were working on last week, what you're working on this week. It's great to get those little updates. So thank you, appreciate that. Welcome, I've also requested that the guys send me pictures. That would oh. be cool too, so awesome. We had like the ones, I think two weeks ago I showed the park update and they had the water line, so I called them like, did you guys take any pictures when you're out digging up doing the water lines? They didn't, so I'm trying to get them to be a little more photogenic and take snap some pictures so I can share so you can actually see what they've done, because that makes a difference. It, it does, especially when I'm trying to figure out which park you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to remember that it, I, I specify locations when it's like Saheli or whatever. I'll remember that. Thank you. Anybody else? If not, then adjourn at 632.